I shift our focus to the scourge that is, well, cash in transit robberies. And there's been an increase this year here in South Africa. Cash management company Cash Connect, they've warned retail companies to be vigilant in light of escalating cash in transit robberies ahead of the Easter weekend. Now, this year alone, that's thus far, 57 incidents have been recorded around the country. To talk to us about the apparent increase, increase in cash in transit heist, we are joined in studio by the South African Banking Risk Information Center's CEO, Kalyani Pillay. A very good morning to you, Kalyani. Thanks for being with us. Sure, it's a pleasure. Yeah. In fact, that's, that's not a correct figure as well. Is it? It's actually, that was an old figure. What's uh, it's sitting at 78 at the moment for this year. 78 cash yeah. in transit robbery, robberies. Yeah. We but various, various kinds of modus yeah. operandi, not all heists. Yeah. Some cross pavement, some static vehicles, but certainly mm. 78. Two 78 million. in about three months, you know, about yes. a quarter. Yes. That in itself is alarming. What are you guys at Sabric seeing with regards to the why this is suddenly escalating or spiking once again? Well, we certainly see a shift in the different kinds of modus operandi. You know, we, we had major cash and transit uh, or attacks on cash and transit vehicles and, and movement of cash. Um, you know, for, for many years. And then we see it shifting between different types of, of, of crimes. We see mm -hmm. ATM attacks, we see attacks on banks, we see um, attacks again on this. So we certainly are very concerned at the moment. We had mm. 268 for last year, by the way. Yeah. So it isn't as if it's got, it had yeah, gone so away it's altogether. Par. It's just about par, is it? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's just it's, a little bit up. It's about 10% increase. It, if you look at three months, sure, about 80, sure, about 320. Sure. So it's about a 10% yeah, increase. Yeah, so it's been a problem for a long time. Tell me about the sophistication of what we're seeing there. This, of course, was the one on the road to the airport where we saw the van being Blow actually up. being blown up. And, mm. and, and it's that kind of visual that really disturbs, I think, uh, uh, the public out there. Are these gangs that operate, are they becoming more sophisticated? Well, look, they've always been very skilled. Mm. They have access to serious ammunition, to explosives, to semi-automatics and automatic weapons. So, so definitely, I mean, they, they, mm -hmm. they, they know what they're going out there to do and they make sure they do what they have to to get it done. And that, that's extremely concerning. But we, we're working very closely with the South African mm -hmm. Police Service um, to deal with this. Uh, cash and transit companies don't just sit by and allow this to happen. Mm -hmm. They take a number of steps to try and mitigate on their side as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a number, there's a, it's a combination of things that, that's mm -hmm. being done. But unfortunately, we, we're seeing this absolute scourge. Do we see the levels of violence that we used to see in, in years gone by, or, or is there less or more violence now? Certainly, you know, a, a, a worrying amount of violence. We've seen a number of security personnel of the CIT companies being shot and killed. Uh, we've seen a number of policemen that have mm. responded to the scene being killed as well. So definitely violent, and I think the fact that they have access to the kind of ammunition and, and, and equipment that they, they need to do their mm. job is also very worrying. Now, let's look at the kind of the areas, I'm sure the urban areas are the targets around, around the country, but which areas are more uh, susceptible to this kind of crime, or is it indiscriminate at the moment? Well, look, you know, we're definitely seeing particular areas. We're seeing particular parts of areas. Mm -hmm. The perpetrators are very smart, in, obviously, in terms of how they select the areas. Mm -hmm. uh, they're obviously looking at what kind of response there would be, how quick would response get to those areas. Mm -hmm. They look at things like cell phone signals. Um, you know, there's a number of, mm -hmm. of, of areas that they look at. I obviously don't want to go too much into yeah. it. It's uh, issues that we, we certainly analyze and we are sharing with the police at the moment. So, so, so they're very... They vary, um, strategic in terms of how mm. uh, they make their selection. Intelligence, police intelligence and your own intelligence and the intelligence uh, of other groups looking at the scourge, that is cash, cash in transit, the heists. Uh, how, does it, how does that picture look with regards to the, the intelligence of this? Uh, is this a problem that we can get on top of? Well, I think, I think uh, it would be... I wouldn't be incorrect in saying far more can be done. I think there's a lot of intelligence out there, lots of information. I think mm. a lot of people know things, and we're certainly calling upon the South African public as well that know 
um, or have information to come forward to the police. So I think it's a combination of things. It's using that intelligence wisely mm -hmm. um, and acting as fast as possible. Speed is really uh, vitally important here to mm -hmm. be able to deal with it. So, you know, we, we're obviously reviewing and relooking mm -hmm. everything because we can't allow this to happen. And the South African police service are pretty serious mm. in terms of wanting to come to the party. So we, 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 we're all busy at the moment. Two businesses and individuals and the members of the public, how do you protect yourself in a way from this kind of crime? Well, certainly from a business perspective, business is doing what they need to do. They're busy reviewing their processes, their procedures, their risk mitigation measures. From a public point of view, very difficult. I think one of the things we'd like to say to the South African public, if you ever see a cash and transit vehicle, you know, whether you're at a shopping center and it's parked outside or on the street, try and stay steer clear of those vehicles to allow mm. the security personnel to do their job without having too many people around them. Yeah. You know, so, so don't be over curious about it, mm. rather just stay away, allow them that kind of space. Uh, don't get in the middle of it. You see people walking in the, the um, security officer walking with canisters <laughs> in a shopping center. Again, just stay, stay away from, from those. Don't park too close to those vehicles mm. if you're having to park. So I think just a few things because the, the, the man in the street doesn't actually deal with this cash. Yeah. Uh, we just want, want to make sure that the cash and transit mm. personnel are allowed to do their job without being hampered. Uh, and if they are attacked, that they're able to respond as well without uh, having any member of the public. Uh, injured or harmed in any way. What, what is the other concerns that you have with regards to security, theft and the like within the banking sector that the public should be aware of? Well, I think, you know, if we're looking at how the public's affected and from a violent sort of crime perspective, the banks are certainly very concerned about the fact that their clients get robbed uh, mm. either on the way to the bank or, mm. or on the way back from the bank. And so we say to people all the time, you know, to carry your cash safely, you need to be mindful of a couple of things. One, don't tell too many people that you're going. If you have to really draw cash <laughs> and big amounts, I mean, I, you know, in this yeah. day and age, most people don't need to do that. You can, there's so many different banking solutions yeah. out there that you can use EFTs, you can do a transaction online. Uh, but rather than don't make it public, if you have to go, make mm. sure that you've got somebody to be with you that you trust. Uh, don't, if you're doing business banking and you're carrying cash, don't use marked vehicles. Mm. People need to change their patterns. Don't use the same day of the week. Don't use the same bank branch. Yeah. You know, it, time is always short, so I would encourage people to go onto the Sabric website, mm. which is www.sabric.co.za, and we have a whole host of advice and tips and different mm. modus operandi to to um, you know, enlighten the South African public so that they can protect themselves. Well, Kalyani, it certainly is disturbing to hear all of us. Thank you very much for joining us. Yes, don't let everybody know that you're going to the bank. We live in that time. Uh, that's the uh, South African Banking Risk Information Center CEO, Kalyani Pele. And, of course, we're talking about cash in transit heists. First, 78 since January. That's what we've had, yes? 78. That's almost one every two days. Anyhow, moving on. A story that is going to affect you and me and the rest of the country. Unions representing bus drivers have now given their employees and employers rather until today, later this afternoon, to engage them if they want to avert this looming nationwide strike tomorrow. Now, thousands of drivers are preparing to go on strike tomorrow after wage talks with their employers deadlocked. Bus drivers say they want a 15% wage hike. They also want to be paid overtime for working on Sundays and public holidays. Their unions say the majority of drivers are forced to work 16-hour shifts and earn less than 5,000 rand a month. NIMSA has called on the Transport Ministry to intervene in the matter as it could affect the entire country for national bus drivers.